today's lecture on treaty law. Uh, as an introduction, we need to know that treaty law and custom is the most important source of international humanitarian law. Treaty law applicable to both international and non-international armed conflict. However, in the area of non-international armed conflict, in treaty law needs to be further developed and strengthened. The Geneva Convention and their additional protocols. There are four Geneva Convention that has been the cornerstone of treaty law in international humanitarian law since it was first adopted after the Second World War. In general, general uh, Geneva Convention protects the individuals and or groups of individuals that do not or no longer engage in armed conflicts. The Geneva Conventions and their additional protocols. The Geneva Convention entered into force in 21st October 1950. Ratification grew steadily through decades. 74 states ratified the convention during the 1950s and 48 states did so during the 1960s. 20 states signed during the 1970s and another 20 states did so in the 1980s. The 26 countries ratified the convention in the early 1990s, largely in the aftermath of the breakups of the Soviet Union, Czechoslovakia and the former Yugoslavia. The Geneva Convention is the most universal treaty that is applicable throughout the world. There are only two states that are not signatories, and they are the Vatican and Syria. The content of Geneva Convention. First, it covers wounded or sick soldiers on land and members of the armed forces medical services. Second, wounded, sick or shipwrecked military personnel at sea and members of the naval forces medical services. Third, prisoners of war. Fourth, civilian, example civilians in occupied territories. Common Article 3. Affords the minimum protection in non-international armed conflict. It represents the minimum standards of protection from which the belligerent should never depart. The rules in common international, common Article 3 are considered to be customary international law and shall be covered in the next lecture. Additional protocols to the Geneva Conventions. Additional Protocol 1, International Conflicts. Additional Protocol 2, Non-International Conflicts. And Additional Protocol 3, Additional distinctive emblem. Protocol ad uh, additional to the Geneva Convention of 12 August 1949 relating to the protection of victims of international armed conflict. Protocol 1, 8 June 1977. Article 14 provides that armed conflicts in which peoples are fighting against colonial domination, alien occupation, or racist regime are to be considered international conflicts. Part 2 of Article 8 to 34 develops the rule of the First and the Second Geneva Convention on Wounded, Sick and Shipwreck. It extends the prote protection of the Convention to civilian medical personnel, equipment and supplies, and to civilian units and transport, and contains detailed provision on medical transportation. Part 3 and several chapters of Part 4, Article 35 to 60, deal with the conduct of hostilities i.e. question which hitherto were regulated by the Hague Convention of 1899 and 1907 and by customary international law. Article 43 and 44 give a new definition of armed forces and combatants. Among the most important articles are those on the protection of the civilian population against the effects of host hostilities. They contain a definition of military objective and provision of attacks on civilian persons and objects. Article 8. Article 61 to 79 deal with the protection of civil, civil defense organization, relief action and the treatment of persons in the powers of a party to a conflict. At part 4, i.e. Article 80 to 91, brings some new elements to the, pro, to the problems of execution of the convention and the protocol. Protocol additional to the Geneva Convention of 12 August 1949 relating to the protection of victims of non-international armed conflict. Protocol 2, 8 June 1977. The aim of the present protocol is to extend the essential rules of the law of armed conflict to internal wars. The, far that, the fear that the protocol might affect state sovereignty 
prevent government from effectively maintaining law and order within their borders and that might be invoked to justify outside intervention. Lead to the decision of the diplomatic conference and it forced session to shorten and simplify the protocols. Instead of 47 proposed, 47 articles proposed by the ICRC of the, of the conference adopted only 28. The essential substance of the draft was, however, maintained. The part on methods and means of combat was deleted, but its basic principles are to be found in Article 4, Fundamental Guarantees. The provision of the activity of impartial humanitarian organization were adopted in a less binding form than originally foreseen. The restrictive definition of material field of application in Article 1 will have the effect that Protocol 2 will be applicable to a smaller range of internal conflicts than Article 3 common to the Convention of 1949. Protocol, protocol additional to the Geneva Convention of 12 August 1949. The instrument recognized an additional emblem composed of a red frame in the, in the shape of square on edge on a white ground commonly referred to as the red crystals. The red crystal is not intended to replace the cross and crescent but to provide a further option. Additional protocol 3 provides for the red crystal in its pure form to be used as a protective device. The emblem may be employed in two different ways. As a protective device, an emblem is the visible sign of protection conferred by the Geneva Convention. As an indicative device, an emblem shows that a person or object is linked to the International Red Cross and Red Crescent Movement. As a conclusion, international humanitarian law is based on treaty law and customary law. Its codes of application is clear and well defined. Respective rights and obligations are stated in ambiguously in the, in the provision. All in all, Treaty International Humanitarian Law offers reliable basis for ascertaining the rights and obligations of the belligerents that is important when participating in a dialogue and in making them follow the International Humanitarian Law. Thank you.